signed the loan for it. Yeah, you signed the loan and made an ordinance, and then you're telling everybody a different story, so I just wanted to know. I'm not telling everybody a different story. I'm Last year, a laptop was purchased without a vote for $869, and when Don asked about why this was purchased in, without a vote, Mr. Meek said, we don't need a vote, it's an emergency situation, and we just bought it. So now that it's different people, the rules are different. Your town could be next. I am not arguing with her. She is not on this in this meeting so far, we've seen Russell start a fight with Belinda, the bookkeeper, because he says she doesn't run the show. Yet, that leaves many people perplexed because in the past, he told Gainesville Channel 20 this. There ain't no clerk, there ain't no show. That's not all that's happened. Russ the Sus, Don the Con have voted against everything, just creating contention. That's fine. the way it is. It's been that way, and it's that way, it's been that way for a reason. Okay. And the reason is so Do you agree so with anything? We can get attendance. Or are you just here to argue? It's not an argument, it's a, it's a dialogue. Everything is an argument with you, sir. Do they have the best interest of the town and its people in their minds? Definitely not. Okay, the next thing on the business to talk about is the grant acceptance information. Back in May, I believe it was, there was with Fox to decide on the bids that were put in. There was only one bid put in for each. One was from Mid Tower and the other one from Fox is correct. They're looking towards Russell for answers because it was Russell's administration under his tenure that did these things with the grants. Now, there was grants for water. We still don't have clean water yet. And then there's the grant for the $1.4 million for fiber optic to all the areas of economic depressed, low-income housing. But Chiefland Florida Electric is bringing that Wi Fiber all to us. So that's no longer an issue. They're going to have roughly 600000 They can only spend it on two things. That's it. People are saying, well, why don't you buy the old post office and re renovate it? You can't. Why don't you buy Herschel's and do this? You can't. You can put in sidewalks or you can build a brand new building, a civic center, neither of which seems it's possible at this point in time. I want to understand is that not. Correct, Russell. There was never an official vote done at the meeting where only one person had put in a you bid. We're supposed to vote on it in May. So there so needs to be an official vote put in for it. Each. There was a vote on Fox and a vote on uh, <coughs> a vote on Mid Tower. That was the only two that uh, yes. turned into papers. There was nothing <coughs> official voted on in the minutes, and they need that done. I must be misunderstanding because the last meeting, Russ the Sus went off the chain saying that three bids have to come in for everything. He always wants three bids. And yet we see again, he never ever got three bids. He had one bid for one thing, one bid for the other thing, and that was it. And then he didn't even officially vote on it. Yet again, self-incriminating. The man never ever did what the charter said. The man is now expecting everybody else to do what he never did. Hypocrisy? Illegal is what I call it. Corruption. And the paper. So now Melissa has asked us to just talk, talk about it and re-vote on it since it was never put in any minutes. So do I hear a motion to go forward? I'll with... make a motion to accept the two bids. Alright, do I hear a second? What was the motion? To accept the bids for the grants that was already discussed for mid tower. Remember when they brought in those books and there was only one bid for each? There was never an official vote done, and they need that okay. in the minutes to move forward. All right. So we mm -hmm. want to go forward with those two bids. I'll second that okay, motion. Okay, we have a second. All that in motion. favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, unanimous. Motion carries. Again, I must be missing something. Why didn't Russ the Sus and Don the Con stop it right then and there and go, no, no, we want three bids, three bids on each of these. They should have six bids in front of them, but they don't. So it's okay for Russ the Sus to vote again on the same thing he did inappropriately.
Does that make any sense to anybody? Point is this, you're never ever always gonna be able to get three bids. People don't want to work with Otter Creek. Has nothing to do with YouTubers, has nothing to do with cameras, has everything to do with the reputation that Russ the Sus has brought the town. I have a question. Yes, sir. Your question. Um, when is there room time for discussion? Because you know, for what? And this may be different, but usually in other meetings I've attended, um, they ask for uh, a motion, mm -hmm. then a second, mm -hmm. and then after you get your motion, a second, then you open the floor for discussion, then you take the vote. And that's what I was waiting for then for a motion to. For this? Yeah. This is already something they already discussed in the past and voted on, but they never put it in the minutes. Okay. So this has already been discussed. So it's just an official vote for the minutes so they can go forward with it because they already did this in the past but never included in their minutes in the previous administration. And yet another failing of Mary Mary, minutes are now scary. So what he's asking is, isn't it supposed to be motion, motion, discussion? Now, you have to understand Robert's rule of orders is not law. It's a recommendation. Parliamentary rule is not law. It's a recommendation. And particularly in my opinion, and that's all it is, I don't like it. I like discussion first. For example, you saw in the previous video, and you can go through all of our playlists in Otter Creek, that they were discussing changing the time of the meeting from seven o'clock to six o'clock. The discussion was there. They were all against it. You don't need a motion. And these council members don't come to meetings reading their material. So how are you supposed to even get a motion number one, get a motion number two, and then have a discussion? They don't even know what they're talking about because they haven't done any of the work that they've been hired to do. So have the discussion, then see if you can get to a first motion, a second motion, and then a final vote. And these procedures, do you ever give information to the people out here? So they can take a look at this stuff? The meeting packet is right here in this binder. I think you came in late when we were explaining all that. Okay. The whole meeting packet is right there in that binder for inspection. And if you want to take any of it home with you, it's 15 cents a copy. And there's also agendas where copies were made. The books are right here if you'd like to also uh, take them, just look at them. Uh -huh. um, that's the only thing I have. Um, Fred Fox, he is the administrator, is going to come and meet with me on Thursday to get the paperwork. Give me what I'm missing um, because it wasn't all together. So I don't know what was the grants that had closed out before and what is fixing to start now, which is the, um, both the second phase of our water plant and the fiber optic. So those two are fixing to start coming forward. We're going to start first with the water. So that's what we need to send to the state that we accepted their bids for their proposal. So. But you're more than welcome to, to look at. Thank you. Belinda's on it. Previous administration would have had no copies, no information. As a matter of fact, Russ the Sus would have attempted to throw you out for even speaking during the public comment section. Okay. And we have department reports. Want to start with administration? Do you have anything, Belinda? <coughs> um. Yes. And, um, Alan Dunn will be here on tomorrow to finish our um, 2022 audit. We will make some journal entries. Uh, at that point, we will be finished. Uh, they're going to upload it to the state, and then they'll let, let us know when it is. Uh, we received a letter uh, from the state saying if we didn't get it soon, at least by November, we would be penalized. Um, at that point, um, they will finish um, not only the 2022 audit, but they will put finish any of the old stuff that's hanging out there in the books. And then I will be able to upload all of the 2023 information. And we should have our audit finished no later than the end of December of this year, which will be the first time we're not behind. And we will get them nasty letters from the state. I've done a previous video going through the 2021 audit and basically in a nutshell, Mary didn't supply all the information. The information was missing. The information was late and the town, it has major financial concerns. They're on the brink of bankruptcy. Town of Otter Creek, residents, I'm speaking to you personally. 
you should be thrilled and praising the Lord for Madam Mayor Therese and for Belinda and for others such as Deanna who actually volunteered and helped in that town hall. Got everything straight and for the first time we're not going to be penalized. Things are actually in order. Things are happening for you and for your town. You should be thrilled and we should thank them together. So um, that's where we stand right now with that. Um, going forward, um, um, if you need to, um, I have the stuff that you guys will need if you're interested in doing any of the building stuff. Uh, I can give you the application and the check <coughs> and things like that. Um, um, right now I think that's just... Um, Okay, as far as the computer goes, I know you were trying to get different quotes for the computer, and there's nobody else around here to get the quotes for the computer. And well, right I just, now I'm just I'm backing up on the hard drive. Hope I don't drop it, and I'm not cutting the machine off. So. I'm just a little confused about previous practice. When last year a laptop was purchased without a vote for $869. And when Don asked about why this was purchased in, without a vote, Mr. Meek said, we don't need a vote, it's an emergency situation, and we just bought it. So now that it's different people, the rules are different. And I'm confused as to why that is. Russ the sus getting thrown under his own bus. Let's be very clear. The mayor can only spend under $500 in an emergency situation. The biggest question is, what's an emergency? Well, why did Russ the Sus spend over $800 on a laptop? It was so Attorney Warm could zoom in. Okay, first of all, not an emergency. Attorney Warm goes to Bronson's meetings. Attorney Warm should have been in person at every single one of Otter Creek's meetings. Not an emergency. As a matter of fact, Attorney Warm should actually be providing Zoom for all of his clients. Not his clients providing Zoom for Attorney Warm. I'm also confused about why the scanner was purchased without quotes. I'd like to see something in writing where I said that or hear it on the recorder. Oh, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. We got Let's the minutes. See Let us Let's see. see. The, minutes, it's in the, the meeting uh, minutes from April 12th. The, um, you want to hear we them? We put it in the budget. Did you want to hear the minutes? We put it in the budget to buy that uh, computer. No, you, you want to hear the minutes? No, we didn't. So April 12, 2022, Councilman Severino asked about the expenditure for the replacement computer and questioned why the council hadn't had any input on the expense. Mayor Meek stated that the funds were in the budget, and when the one failed, we needed to replace it before the meeting. I think that was because Worm was on... We had to use him for our laptop. So I guess yeah. we get to deem what the emergencies are. Yeah, and we don't have to follow protocol when we can do whatever. The scanner was also purchased with no quotes. So our ordinances says anything over $500 has to have three quotes. If you do not have three quotes, then you put it out for bid. And I'm willing to go. I'm, I will. That's our copy. I was told by legal counsel, you take your ordinances, your resolutions, your charter, and the state statutes, and that's what you govern your office with. And I'm going to do that. Okay. You said legal legal counsel. I asked North Puget when I was met with him, not only on the building, but on that. What is what do we govern our office with? Our office. And that's what he told me. You you take your ordinances, your resolution, your um, statutes and your charter and you go by all of those and if your ordinances said to do this and the resolution said you amended this but now you go this way that's the way we go okay this was this all on the phone no i was in person we went in person okay and that's where he's we did the building and zoning form made sure we were going forward per the statutes and because we already had building um uh, building permits and other that already in place. Attorney Fugate is an individual who represents some of the more developed or growing or larger cities and towns in the area. And you have to understand that the town of Otter Creek does not have to have an attorney literally there at every meeting for everything. They can actually seek legal counsel. 
I've got questions, I need help with this, I'll pay you for this, and whatever the charge is, I'll pay you for. Instead of keeping them on retainer, such as Attorney Warm, and Attorney Warm charging them for all of these 6,000 emails back and forth with Mary Mary, emails are now haunting you. They're extremely scary. You don't have to have a lawyer there 100% of the time. It can be as need basis, and that's what they did based on where they were going with the building and permits and zoning. So we needed to make sure that the verbiage on that was right, as well as as going forward with any forms. We got he looked at those. He, got, he said everything's fine. We did. He did note that in the one of the resolutions for the building permit that we were able to make a an adjustment for, as the cost goes up in the building permit, and we could do a resolution for that. Well, how would you how would you decide to uh, go to to Norm, Mr. Fugate, for that? There's a lot of attorneys. Mike. Because I had people asking for building permits. It was recommended by the county and different cities. Mm -hmm. Recommended by who? By the county and the different cities. But he's the, the attorney for Chief One. He, he's the attorney Chief for Chief Lane. Cedar Key. He, Cedar Key. Um, he, he has eight municipalities. So Norm Pupin knows what he's talking about. He's, he's, well, I'm not doubting that. No. Uh, does the, does the county have an attorney that would advise us on such things? No, they they don't want to touch it. So what was the expenditure for Mr. Fugati? That was, it was for all the building to sit down and talk to us about going forward with the building permits. It was talked about um, the court ordinances, resolutions. It was all I asked my question to how do we govern ourselves in this office? $330. Well, why don't we ask him to be our attorney? We did. He won't touch us. I can't blame him. No. This is ironic coming from Don because Attorney Warm could not stand Don and he was very vocal about it in previous meetings. And so it's not because of YouTubers, yet again. It is not because of cameras, yet again. It's not because Northerners moved south. It's because of Don the Con. It's because of Russ the Sus. It's because of this mentality in this town that these people don't want to represent this town. It's it's a free-for-all in legalities and liabilities. No lawyer wants to touch these people. Um, I did mention, forget to mention that um, as of, we now have, back here on the shelf, we have, we have a book open to the public for the all the grants. You, there's a book of ordinances, resolution, sunshine law, ethics, municipality. You also have a book of the um, minutes from 1980 coming forward. These are open to the public. You're more than welcome to come in, sit down, look at them, but there is a charge for any copy and they cannot leave this facility. So. Now going forward with the computer, what's the result? Are we going to vote on it since we can't get any more quotes? I just shelved it for something and just hope nothing goes wrong uh, because we're not backing up. We, we have, we're backing up everything on a thumb drive, but if it, it's one of those that's not protected against breakage. So I vote for her to get the computer. Thank you, Gail. And as I've said in the past, if the town needs any help with purchasing computers, I have no problem helping. All you have to do is reach out and ask. Whether it's Gail, whether it's Madam Mayor Therese, whether it's Russ the Sus, Don the Con, Belinda, Vice Mayor Zim, just ask. I will help. I want to see the town thrive. You make a motion, I'll say. I make a motion for her to buy the computer. <laughs> Y'all to buy the computer, us to buy the computer. I'll second the motion. And what was right. the dollar a month? You know, she, she, she done told us the last came up before. Us. From it's in your packet. You have it at home. Yeah. yeah. Gator works. Yeah. So we done. We discussed it. this last meeting. Can't be repeated. Of course. Okay. Do you know the figure off the top of your head, Belinda? No, ma'am. He, um, he, we're going to sit down and see and if we can revise it and maybe lower it for us, and but yet still meet the needs that we. <laughs> I know that was, it was about three thousand mm -hmm. dollars. But that's okay. also what we want to take in. So I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
Uh, For those keeping count, Russell has voted against absolutely everything except something that he did with the grants previously where he didn't provide three bids. And if you listened, faintly, Don actually said I on the nay as well. He had his verbiage wrong. You go nay, not I, but it was Don and Russell completely against new computer for Belinda. All right, motion carried. Um, another thing about the departments, I know it was asked previously why the council members are not assigned to different departments. That question was asked in 2022. And I do believe that the board members should be assigned different departments, so we should all be actively doing things here. So I would like everyone to start thinking about what department you would like if you have an interest in different departments before they just get assigned to you, because I know in the past you asked about this and it was stated as a response that um, we are all responsible for any area that requires assistance, which I believe is true. We should all be available to help. That's the whole purpose of us being on this board is in the best interest of the town and to better the town. It was Don that asked Russell that at that 2022 meeting. What's going on with all the departments? And at that time, to my understanding, Russell was trying to remove council and put himself up as a dictator mayor. He didn't want anybody else to have any other say. And he removed their say over the different department heads. Now, I understand departments such as parks and recreation. The park is no longer active, but you still own it. Why not make it active? Why not put somebody over it? Many hands make light work. And we can all pitch in and make Otter Creek a great place to live again. It used to be the thriving hub of Levy County, and it still can be. But if you all look at the departments, maybe at the next meeting, we could figure out where you guys think you'd be best suited so that people have more responsibilities and more involvement. That would be great. The other question I had was regarding the brush truck and a status update with the brush truck. Um, November is when the chief said that we'd be doing the exchange and all the papers would be in order. If you don't remember, Madam Mayor actually did a trade. She traded a brush truck that's never been used by Otter Creek to put out any fires to Chief Lynn so that they would actually provide us two years of fire protection for the residents of Otter Creek. She actually has the residents' best interests in mind. My question was, it was brought up when we were voting on the sale of it that this truck was given to us by the county when in fact there's an ordinance that it was purchased and a loan was taken out to purchase the truck and I don't know why that we were told otherwise. <coughs> the truck is paid for out of the county, the funds have come from the county and if you look at the title on that truck, <laughs> it's probably titled to the Water Creek Volunteer no. Fire Department. No, City of Town of Water Creek. That's how it is. Um, it was in first ordinance. Town of Water Creek, and you signed the loan for it. Yeah, you signed the loan and made an the ordinance, bank. and then you're telling everybody a different story, so I just wanted to know. I'm not telling everybody a different story. I'm telling them everybody that we got $5,000 a year from the county, and that's what made the payments on the truck. I mean, that's pretty simple arithmetic. You got some proof of that transaction? I Russ the sus getting ran over by his own bus yet again. Pathological lie. He told everybody the truck was donated by the county. Therefore, it should go back to the county. That's a lie. He actually signed a loan, took out a loan, I believe it was $18,000, $19,000, for the truck. Now, whether the county supplied funds to then pay off that loan, he forgot to share all of that, didn't he? Those funds could have came from the county to be paid for anything. We could have got clean water. The fact is, you lied and you covered it up, just like you do with everything. I just wanted everyone to know that in fact, it we was all in that yeah, in there that yeah. Of course, it, of course, it was. You the ones you took you next door. You out of here in your truck. Yep. So there was a special meeting to purchase the truck. Just so everybody knows, we purchased the truck in 2006. There was a special meeting to do so. We took out a loan. The loan was signed and the ordinance was wrote 
to purchase the truck so people don't think that we're doing anything illegal. It was a purchased truck. The ordinance and the loan were both signed by Russell Meeks. So I just wanted to understand why that was. I'd like to know otherwise. if that truck ever put out a fire. Did it ever put out a fire? I couldn't tell you anything like that, and I don't believe we're going to get involved in that right now. <laughs> so that was my question. Residents of Otter Creek, if you don't realize it by now, please wake up. Russ the Sus is corrupt. He's absolutely corrupt. He's a pathological liar. You already know he is. He's been proven a liar meeting after meeting after meeting. Do you realize there are mountains of paperwork to go through? He thought he got everything out to cover himself up. He didn't because Mary wasn't organized. They barely even touched that mountain of paperwork. Every day they could be uncovering more incriminating evidence and more lies. So now we're on to the building zoning and water. Water department, we got our, we got a permit back for the um, DEP to, to move forward on the uh, water treatment. Um, that stuff is um, um, it's going. It's probably going to take a few weeks to proceed on to get the materials here and get stuff set up. And uh, I'm hoping that that everyone's schedule works out and it can be installed by the end of the month. And then we, so come November, not November, but uh, by first to mid-November, we've got a couple of processes to go through with the DEP that that will be fully online. And uh, uh, you would hopefully uh, very clearly see a difference in your water quality. Hopefully taste it, too. Yeah. That'd be great. Our water filtration system, that $100,000 gifted system, has been down for quite some time because the inappropriate plumbing of pumps that keep exploding, they're blowing, they're, they're, they're dying left and right. Now, is it the water that's killing them, like brain cells in Otter Creek? I don't know, but I do know that it's got to get better, and it looks like it's going to hopefully soon. And we, as far as the building goes, we had talked about the inspectors, y'all want more information and Asked for that, um, given that the last meeting. Any comments on it? Anybody have any comments or question about the building inspector? There was two packets handed out. One was for safe built, and one was for the John or Jack. Jack. Did Jack. we advertise that, or not? Or we just ask them? Or are they just? found out or there is no you know the, those, there was only three choices to go through the county through the county and all the ones that said contact the company. county recommended these yeah, three jack was one the county's recommended and um <coughs> and all the cities that you safe built suggested us use somebody else not to mention you have to pay safe built a price whether you <coughs> use them or not and yeah. I was That's just one. wondering if we could just, you if you know, somebody put their application in, can we just hire that person yeah. if they have a license? You know what I mean? Yeah, they're all. They happy. can come in and say, yeah, I would like to yes. to do that too. As long you know. as they have the credentials and, and yeah, yeah. They can they're a license, they yes. have to give it to yes. us, and, and we can look and see yes, they they can do it. Okay, so. This gets back into permitting, and there's really only two places in Otter Creek that needs permits. Number one, Vice Mayor Zim, who's looking to build a campground. And some of you are going, campground? Can Otter Creek survive with two campgrounds? No, Otter Creek would thrive with multiple campgrounds. It's Florida. And then number two, me. But I'm not building. It's leasing of the cell tower. George and I have no intention to build in this mess in Otter Creek. Until everything settles, yes, we want to build our dream house on the ranch property, and we will. But when the timing is right, when the right people are on the council completely, not just partially, completely, when everything is settled, the dust is settled, and the contention is gone, then we will build. I'm not in favor of hiring that dude. It sounds like y'all have already hired him. He lives in Colorado. He will never go on the job. Apparently, I need taught and trained. I'm the one with the schoolhouse. Maybe Russ the Sus can come over and teach me. But to be a building inspector, you have to be on site, on the job. Just because you live in Colorado doesn't mean you're not going to be at the job in Florida. 
I live in Ohio. Guess what? I live in Florida too. There's these things called planes and they work really well. And a lot of my time is in Florida. And a lot of my time is in Ohio. And that individual who's doing work in Florida for all of these major cities is there. He's on site. We need to hire that other company because they have a set up building department. That's the reason they cost more money. But they do plant, they do uh, plan examination, they do, uh, they do everything that needs to be done. And this guy is not going to do that. <clears throat> Bronson uses that company and they're already complaining about how much they spend and they do a lot more building than we do. Well, we know, we know the uh, Cedar Key, we know English is getting away from these people because they're talking yep. too much. Now, about we are trying to year. talk to another guy. His name is Joe Payne. Um, um, I'm not, he's out of Melbourne. Um, Norm said that's who right now Cedar Key is using. Um, Inglis is in the process of working with him too, so we're trying to get a hold of him to see if he can give us uh, um, maybe talk to us about coming on and what his fees are. Um, we don't know if he is a set fee each month or if it's going to be per job. So we don't know. Restless us again, trying to spend your $25,000 out of Creek that you don't have. It doesn't exist. So how's he going to get it? He already holds the state record for the largest tax increase in the history of the state of Florida. But yet he's against anything that Madam Mayor Therese wants to propose as an increase. Where's 25 grand a year going to come from for this other company? We reached out for him trying to get him to see if he's have to set the permit fees up so that they generate enough money to pay the bill whatever the is. That is correct. That's That's correct. Here's the absolute ignorance in what Russ the Sus just said. Even though Belinda and Zim both said, yeah, you're correct. If one person, only one person in Otter Creek builds a year and you owe this company 25 grand a year, no matter what, so your permit fee is going to be 25,000 per year to make sure you have enough money to pay this person, nobody would ever build. Of course, that's what you want anyway. You want nobody to ever build. So nobody does build because you have a permit fee of $25,000 per permit. You still owe them $25,000 a year. Where's the money come from? But somebody has got to do... Um, uh, Planning. All of this other stuff. Uh, List it. Plan review. Uh, flood, floodplain management review, land development regulations yep. for the town. That's all got to be done. And that guy in Colorado, certainly in Green, Colorado, ain't going to do that. I make a motion that we advertise it. Got a question out there. Mr. Porter, I have a question. Chairman? Yes. Well, the customary way is to advertise, and I'm questioning why it has not been advertised, or should, shouldn't you go forward and advertise? Oh my goodness, here we go again. The man who never said one word during Russ the Sus' tyrannical reign. Because it should be open to anyone that, that is capable of performing the task. Well, so, we, we've got three quotes. That's what it says, three quotes. And we did get the three quotes. But you one, did. One, one didn't want to mess with us at all. One is on the table that he is just like an attorney. He wants a flat break fee every month. And then I, we have one that's I, under, I understand. So now that. we're in the process of talking to the other one. As I've spoken to many people from Cedar Key, Inglis, there are very few people who are willing to do this around the Tri County area. Legally, they don't have to post this in any type of paper or anything. This isn't like the clerk position. This isn't like the maintenance man position. This is hiring a third party. Now, if you want to go out for bids, you can post it out for bids. But it's Levy County of all places. This is an economically depressed area. So now you're going to go, okay, let's put it out for bid. Instead of putting it out for bid, waiting for people to come to them, they went out to the people and said, can we get information from you? So we're... We can, it's up to the council whether we want to advertise or not. I mean, we're doing the best that we can at this point to find someone. Right now, the council does not know all of the people that are capable of doing the job. 
and I think everyone should have the opportunity and well, the way to do that is to advertise yeah, yeah, so okay. that everyone that everyone that may be interested and may be more qualified may be able to apply and yeah, so I mean, what we need is for you to suggest maybe it can't be in the, it can't be in the chief one citizen because right now, from what I understand, anybody who is qualified is in Cedar Key, Stephen Hatchie, or Tree Key. Us getting someone to help us with the few things that we've got going now are slim and none. So, I mean, where would you is suggest? Is the problem with advertising? Sure, here's the problem with advertising. Anybody you're looking to get that you would be advertising this position for doesn't read the paper. The world lives on this now. The world works on this now. Anybody who's still reading the paper, and I get it, this is a generalization of a comment and an opinion, and it's mine. They're not looking for work of that type. Your advertising is never gonna hit the target of who you want to attract to do the job. I don't see a problem. With I was asked to be a member That's what we out here. here. To, we should advertise it while we did. But, I mean, should we? I'm we suggesting anybody make a suggestion as to where would be the best Citrus County? No, I don't know. Alachua County? Right. <laughs> Gainesville, Pike. Yeah, yeah, more people use the Gainesville Sun than any other paper I around mean, this area. Yeah. Chief and Citizen is very limited to who sees it. It has no so viewership. There's no viewership on the Citizen. I mean, you're not going to get any good response from no. them. There's no real good source to advertise. You reached out to all the companies that we were recommended by all the other agencies in the county yeah, as recommended. Right. We reached out to those, and this is the ones we've gotten responses from. Yes, Which, sir. When you put the ad in the paper, I would suggest, I'm not, I'm not anybody that lives here, but I've been in the construction field all my life, you have to be a licensed contractor to be able to get the certification for building and zoning. So why don't you try to hire a contractor that'll take the test to do that, that's local. So we're all talking about advertising, right? We're gonna advertise this, I think there's a motion made. That's what I, yeah. I thought the motion was made. Yeah, it was the motion made. They finally made a unanimous decision. Next month, they're going to come back and fight over it all over again. Even a retired contractor can go take the test for it. Did anybody, did you have something you wanted to say? Oh, yeah. Now's the time. I do. <laughs> and I, I'm a council, I am on a council to be a vote for the residents of Arta Creek, okay? There is maybe 45 houses with people that reside in these houses. There's only 45. Hmm. Me and Darling Hudson went by as many residents we could yesterday and gave them a copy of the agenda for tonight's meeting. And we had casual conversations with those we did see. <clears throat> We did learn that most do not want to unincorporate as a town. Again, remember, that's only 45 houses in this. We might have 100 voters, but there's only 45 houses, if that many. Tammy Jones actually shared the information. There are 71 registered voters in Otter Creek. Some say we have struggled this long, so let's continue on. A few want the pros and cons of staying and not. So I said we would try to get that for well, You said that, right? You were going to try to get the pros and cons of unincorporating and staying So far, all I've gotten is a list with the tax stuff. Mm -hmm. Nobody else has given me any other information except so for the I told process. Them I, would but, get um, to them. I have that. We asked about people attending meetings, which we didn't have many before this new council. So uh, I want people to know that we didn't have many before. They said, regardless. With them attending and voicing opinion, the five members have the last say. That's what I'm trying to change. I want to be their voice, and some don't want to be filmed, and I said I understood because, believe me, I quit daily because I'm in the limelight now. 
I applaud Gail for going out to the residents. This is exactly what the town of Otter Creek needs. Gail is exactly what the town of Otter Creek needs. And you're going to have to understand, I cannot agree with Gail on everything and still be friends with her. George and I do not agree on everything. I don't agree with everything with Madam Mayor Therese. And nor does everybody have to agree with me. When you're watching these videos, I share my opinion. I try and share the facts and I try and share my opinion. And my opinion is Gail is the council member that the people of Otter Creek need. Some mention of staying to themselves, more or less hiding out, trying to keep hidden. Because someone could be filming you and you will be found guilty by association and not knowing what for. Now keep in mind, I'm not referring to Jeremy himself. We have people from all over filming us now. Our town has been put on display for the world to laugh, ridicule, and humiliate us. We are real people with real feelings. I do not wish this on any town. I did let the people know that before I cast the vote, I would get their opinions and would keep them informed. Some liked our new council and some do not. I reminded them that the two seats will become available in January to fill out the paperwork, to run, and we'll be voting in April. There can be changes made with their votes. I told them, let's ride out the storm together. Surely the rain will stop someday. Some are asking about the lawsuit against our town. My answer was Russell and Mary have not been found guilty or not guilty by a judge yet. But maybe the outcome will come out soon and we can put this behind us. And as for the world out there watching the show, remember, we're real people. And yes, we watch also because we never know who's going to be the next victim. Because we all make mistakes and could offend anyone at any time. Your town could be next. Your town is next. Almost every single town is broadcasting their town hall meetings on YouTube. They use YouTube Live and Facebook. This is not uncommon. It's just uncommon for Otter Creek because all the corruption has been hidden for so long. Do you think I moved into Otter Creek and wanted to film all of this? You've seen nothing. I've even been invited to film in my town hall meetings here where I live at Hale's headquarters. I want nothing to do with it. For years, I gave them the opportunity to do the right thing. They stole from me. They're bigots. They lie. They cover up. They're corrupt. But let's be real. It will end. When you remove the foolishness, when you remove the dysfunction, the world will have nothing to laugh at anymore. This is just the beginning of comments from the people in Town Hall. Gail's not done yet, and things are about to get out of control.